Ready? Do you want to do you want to be in it when we start? You go slow. Hi guys, welcome to Essence of Medicine. This is the history of Christmas past. My name is Alyssa Haber. And I'm Santa. <laughs> so I'm um, welcome to this episode of Essence of History. The history of Christmas. What could be more interesting than that? So Amanda, tell me about first how you feel when Christmas comes close. <laughs> I feel, if I'm going to be honest, I feel overwhelmed when Christmas is coming. I feel like there's a lot of pressure surrounding Christmas and that it doesn't really go back to its original roots. I can I can get on board with that. There's a lot that rides on Christmas. Um, I just think as we get older, we see Christmas in a different way. Definitely. So I, I, you lose a little bit of that. I'm so excited to sit under the Christmas trees with family and drink hot chocolate and watch movies. Mm -hmm. You get older and it's, it's more of that stress and making sure everything goes as planned, but there's still that little bit of joy that comes with the holiday seasons. That, but the, the happiness that you see in the children, especially around the Christmas time, is priceless. It's truly, you know, they're um, just uh, the uplifted uh, spirit that they have. Just in December, it's just everybody's looking forward to that. And you said something about the, the tradition and the, about the origin of that. Um, now, I, I put some preview out there that I'm... Um, Christmas, the way we celebrate it, and most of the world is celebrating it, is an American holiday. We invented the Christmas. It is. Hey, we, by are, we are. Uh, it is our holiday, and they other people can you now think or pretend that uh, they have some contribution in that to some degree. Yeah. But what is the most Christmassy things that you can think of? Christmas tree. Okay. The Christmas tree was originally actually came from the Egypt. Long time before the oh. thousand BC, they would put something on a tree. And that tradition with Julius Caesar uh, bringing that tradition to Rome. And then that tradition continued in Germany where they put stuff on that. But the Christmas tree, the way you see that, it's just 170 years old American tradition how that we bring a evergreen and we put decoration on that. That's a, one of the most Christmassy thing, the Christmas tree, here you are. The way we do it, we took it from Germans, but we made it so much better. We put added so much glitter to that. Mm -hmm. In Germany, they <laughs> used to add actually cookies or edible stuff. So... For Santa to eat? No, the no. tradition here is for, for children. children. For well, children. now that Ethan? now that you say Ethan. that, you know there's some different like garlands that they make out of popcorn and um, nut oranges. And, absolutely, and corn and popcorn and so on. You know, um, but mostly the glitter that you see, it's a uh, hate to say that was at the uh, 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 department store kind of thing to attract more people in in around 1830s uh, to 1860s that was so what what else is very christmasy santa santa mm. let's talk about santa now i know you guys have done your homework so why don't you tell me about santa about our santa or about the true santa no t talk about both because they're not separate you cannot separate them in the christmas tradition sure well yeah. i'm not well, well versed on Santa. You know, we all kind of have that childhood version of what you read in the children's books and, you know, the overnight delivering the presents, which does happen. Yeah. But then yeah. there's also. Yes, for sure. There's also that uh, religious side of things of where Santa came with the Saint Nicholas mm -hmm. and how you get that name. Um, and I think you're on to. Well, actually, I know you're on to something when you say uh, we kind of Americanize you know, these things to make it how we want it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we created St. Nicholas, um, you know, this saint in the Roman Catholic Church to become the gift giver, the Christmas, the the man of the, of the winter season. Yeah, but let's, we can go either from Santa, what's today, mm -hmm. go back and talk about 
where that come from, where that come from, or we can go from the origin, say, mm-hmm. where was it started, and then follow over the centuries to our today. Now, was it historical Santa Claus? Yes, was? it was. It, uh, it, it has been a historical person mm-hmm. uh, named uh, Saint Nicholas, mm-hmm. and today... In Germany, the 6th of uh, December is uh, uh, celebrated by most of Middle Europe and even Northern Europe as the day of uh, St. Nicholas or Nicholas Day, where people get a uh, uh, sock uh, or something or advent calendar where every day you open another small door. And An start. advent calendar. Yeah. I loved so, my advent calendars growing yeah. up. Yeah. We got them straight from Germany, too, actually. That's so cute. Mm-hmm. We sold them at our school. Just another way to count down the holidays. Yeah. But it was always German chocolate. What another is cho- way chocolate? To- it was yeah. always chocolate, yeah. and we always got them from Germany. All I'll my remember. kinders, uh, every year, and the, the, and starting the, in, the, uh, in the Nicholas Day, mm-hmm. they get a, uh, some present and then the Advent calendar. But... That Saint Nicholas or Nicholas was a monk, oh, okay. and uh, in about I think about uh, uh, somewhere between sixth, five, fifth, or sixth century, where well, being a good Christian, God go, go would go to poor people, not necessarily around Christmas, but just all the time, and give them food, mm. and uh, I know that the uh, kids these days are not. I'm more excited with it, the iPhone or iPad. Every year, Christmas gets more and more expensive. And, and that is the luxurious. special part of it. But on the other hand of it, the older I get, the more I would accept food as a Christmas present right. as well. Right. <laughs> so he would go around and give people, poor children, food. And uh, that tradition got, and he was actually a monk in mm-hmm. today's what we call Turkey. I forgot what century it was. I think it was either third or fifth century, but practically um, in a uh, city that called the Myra, he uh, would go and give uh, food, and that tradition got passed on and on and on. So more people would do that. And his name, that's how he got his sainthood, actually, because he was taking care of the poor people, poor children, Especially in winter, you know, being winter, being hungry, that can be deadly. I think in the beginning of, like, the celebration of Christmas, it was actually around winter solstice. And they were, or because of winter solstice, and part of what they were celebrating is the fact that they can eat. Because of the cold winter, they're always worried about starvation. Yes, that is a huge... Now, we... Now, we've just walked to a supermarket and uh, filled out a basket. I just went yesterday, about $300 mm. chocolate that I gave to everybody. Um, that, that much calorie, you had to, you know, kill a bear with your bare hand to get that much calorie to your community. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, we are a, a society of plenty. But talking about uh, Saint, uh, Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas got accepted in the entire Europe. And then in in in, in Holland or Netherlands, the, the version the, that they used for St. Uh, Nicholas was Sinterklaas. That's the Dutch word for St. Nicholas mm-hmm. abbreviation. So Sinterklaas um, came to U.S. and became Santa Claus. Now I'm going to tell you something. Do you know the city called New uh, Amsterdam? Yes. What's what that city? In New Amsterdam? The city of New Amsterdam. What is What do we call the city of New Amsterdam? Oh, now? I don't know. New York. Oh, New York sure. used to be called New, New, New Amsterdam. Amsterdam. You are correct. So we, I remember there's a that. lots of Dutch influence. So with that influence, uh, the Sinterklaas became Santa Claus in New Amsterdam and now mm. New York and then the entire United States. Now, he wasn't a big man because these monks they were aesthetic they were thin but became bigger how did he become bigger because he became older and become wealthy he become you know 
Mm-hmm. Eats lots of cookies. Yeah. That's what happened is they See? they added in the Christmas cookies aspect. But you know, these days everybody want to be skinny. But in just not even 200 years ago, being skinny was you were more likely were to famine. die. Yeah, you were in famine. Being big, that was was uh, like uh, if you see some models from 100 years ago, they don't have pretty much good amount of, uh, you know, healthy. Well, because that means they aren't having to work hard and they aren't having to like worry about yes. food. They're I having mean, a life yeah. of luxury. So the Santa become bigger, and older, and had the beard, but he still didn't have the red clothes and so on. That came all in 18, about 1820. Wow. Do you know what he wore before then? Nobody really knows because that wasn't a tradition. It became a tradition with Santa. But the Santa's outfit, as we see today, Mm -hmm. who can tell me where that came from? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola oh, makes I should have f- guessed that. That makes so much sense. Coca-Cola An advertising scheme. Do you notice Coca-Cola's bottle, red color, is mm-hmm. the same color that Santa mm-hmm. wears? Yep. We could go all about advertising. 1930s. And oh, 1930s. Yeah. Growing up, my family had a lot of like Coca-Cola polar bear Christmas decoration. Yeah, here you are. Well, so we covered two things. A Christmas tree and Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. We haven't covered the first Christmas no. or the beginning of Christmas. So what do you want to know about that? What do you want to say? Well, was Santa there on the first Christmas? No, Santa wasn't Santa was wasn't even born in the first Christmas. The our the Santa the way we know it is a invention from a book mm-hmm. that uh, was published in New York by a very uh, famous uh, writer I forgot the name, but in a book that uh, um, he brings that Santa, he practically tells a poem to create a poem. He was himself a, 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 a I think a Protestant, uh, um, how do you call him, reverend, uh, bishop, that he wrote a poem about the uh, Santa Claus uh, for his children. Now, what you need to know Christmas was not always appreciated by Christian in the New World or even in the Old World. As a matter of fact, did you know they would find some anybody in the, uh, in Boston if they would f- uh, celebrate Christmas, they would find them. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. So people who wanted to uh, celebrate Christmas, they had to go to New York. So pilgrims, mm. the religious, they... They banished, they literally forbid celebration of the Christmas uh, initially. So, um, but so this bishop wrote a poem about the beauty of Christmas and the Santa Claus and invented all those uh, reindeers. Okay. And that was just, I think, 1820 something. 1823. Good one. Good one. 1823. Amanda, do you remember which two reindeer got their names changed? No, I already forgot. I think it was um, Vixen and Dasher Dancer. <laughs> if you guys are cu- curious to the answer. One of them was Blixen. <laughs> yep, it them. was Blixen. And, um, but yeah, check out our TikTok on yeah. Essence by IS Life. So why did, the, why did these religious pilgrims ban Christmas? Because Christmas, because our a... Christmas, when I celebrate Christmas, my grandma makes a big deal about the mother and the child. What is that? The nativity scene. Nativity scene. My grandma makes a huge deal of the nativity scene, and I'm okay. sure your family. Has oh, a I, oh yeah, my grandma's got that one that she puts out in her snowy lawn every Christmas. Our mm-hmm. understanding of Christmas is it's the birth of Christ. So why would the pilgrims ban that? Let's go to the root of that. First of all, uh, according to Bible, when uh, Christ was born, people were herding their goats and sheep. Their flocks, yep. Nobody does that in winter. If any anything, Christ was most likely born in spring or early summer because nobody <laughs> really takes the herd. That is according to uh, Bible. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
but more importantly, you know, um, Constantine, Emperor Constantine, the first uh, uh, Christian emperor, decided the 24th of the December is going to be birth of the Christ. Just, just like that. But there's a huge historical political fact to that, to uh, why he decided it that way. So, and these pilgrims, they would read the Bible. They would know the story. They knew there is another aspect of the Christmas, which has nothing to do with Christianity, which is a pagan. A well, pagan say, holiday. Pagan holiday. So, so they did not like that. They did not mm -hmm. like the pagan aspect of the Christian holiday. And it took actually almost um, in the 1700 years, around 1600, 1700, that Christmas was slowly moving from a, being a pagan holiday to being a Christian holiday. And that is why they didn't like I have a because question. They were, they, were, they were truly believing that that is interfering with their beliefs, with their religion, with their which. I say my my yeah. My question is um like the name itself Christmas comes from, you know the origin like the mass of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I was Where curious. Did they start that that yeah. that's what I was curious about was that what, like when did we adapt the name Christmas? When and where? As well in Holland, they started. Mm -hmm. With Dutch truly a people. mass, a mass of the Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and that was a counterpart, counterpunch to the pagan who are doing this unbelievable pagan holiday. They call, the, it, they call it Christmas? No, they mm -hmm. would, the pagan would call it something else. Initially in Rome, they would call it Saturnalia. And for people who don't know what Saturnalia is, you would be blushing if you would go and read what saturnalia was i want to know is it, is it related to satire no okay no Woo. saturn is the one okay. jupiter happy the, with that yeah, so you know the astronaut you know the, the the greek they have their own gods like, uh -huh. like zeus zeus the version of the the, the jupiter was the what, the main god of the roman but there was another god saturn and the Saturnalia is the feast of the, for the god of Saturn, the, uh, the other god. And there was another holiday there. It's called Juvenilia, where they would celebrate the children of... Mm, because the children, the children, they had no place in their society. Saturnalia was a big celebration where the role would change. You know, they had slaves. It was everybody was goofy. For a whole month, the slave would be the master and the master would be slave. You're what kidding we, me. No. I think we should I'll try that. One. A no month of us being Hamid? Yeah, no. Hamid taking no, over. I, 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 I opt out. I don't want to be. <laughs> no, no, you want to you work 130 hours I, a week? You know what? Yeah. For a month? I'd try anything. Okay, I, no, just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, no. I, take it, I take it back. So, in that month, but there were things as well that that's not the part that would make you blush. They would celebrate that with lots of orgies. Oh, oh. see? Yep. Satire, I'm telling you. No, it's not satire. It's just, they were Roman. They were just, that was their thing. And that was was celebrated in, by Roman, the Roman gave it to all, and all these pagan gods and the, uh, all the other Germans, and the, uh, the, they always celebrated um, the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. And there is a reason for that. You know, uh, when you get to 21st of December, um, the days get shorter and shorter and shorter. The sun mm -hmm. becomes the lowest on the horizon. And it stays there for three days, and then at the twenty fourth, start rising again. That was a sign that sun is going to go up higher. It's going to become warmer, starting of the you know practice days getting longer. So that was celebrated all along Europe mm -hmm. long before. So in Holland, they wanted to have counteract this peak and horrible celebration. By the way. Even in New York in uh, early 1800, um, 
what we call today Christmas was carnival and it was tons of tons of violence. Mm. People would go like you know like a like a Sturgis or like a Oktoberfest like they would go drunk and destroy property to go rent, uh, you know, they, they, and so on. As a matter of fact, the police force in New York City was established, or Boston, one of these places, was established, no, New York City, I believe, was established after, in I think in 2018, in, 18, uh, in 1818, they had really horrible re- no, the, 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 the violence in Christmas time, so they had to uh, create the police force in New York City to be prepared for the next year. So, now, in counteract all of that, in Dutch, the Christian says, we are going to do something different. We are going to do a mass for the Christ, a Christ mass. Mm-hmm. And the Christ mass became Christmas. Before that, nobody would call it even Christmas. So Christmas, the, even the name, is about 200 years old. So yep. do you see that this, all these developments are not that, that old? So, so then we had Christmas, and then um, people just couldn't let the other tradition go, though. So they took lots of things from them. They mixed it together. Mm. And that was one of the reasons, actually, what true Christian didn't like Christmas, mm-hmm. because more and more these people brought pagan like a Christmas tree, like... Uh, the, the traditions of the pagan yeah, holiday. They, they bring with it to, the, their, sure. to, the, to the Christmas. So, and now we are in 1820s. Now, Christmas, the name established, the Santa Claus, not the current version, but that version established. The book with the, all the reindeer and all we come to Rudolph. Amanda, what do you, what do you know about <laughs> Rudolph? Well, I just found out that Rudolph wasn't born with a red nose. Oh, okay. <laughs> what else you got? Red nose? Illness? Were you saying? Yes. Can yeah, you see? We American, we lo- again, Rudolph, all these uh, Santa Claus and reindeers, Mrs. Claus and so on, all, they are all American inventions, okay? So, um, they, we love in America an uh, underdog mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. You, know, you go to look at the movie theaters and so on, like, uh, uh, like Rocky, like uh, almost half of the movies. Every about, every movie has someone who has a come up, and that is we love we love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So imagine now there is a there is a reindeer who is sick who is has a red nose. This is mis- getting made fun of. They made wouldn't let him of. play in all the reindeer games. Yeah. he's yeah. getting bullied. And it's now that foggy Christmas Eve, his, Santa his came disability to Disability becomes his power. Yeah, that's what Rudolf is. He shines the way for the rest of the world. So, um, when did you, when did you, uh, when, when, well, how were you when you knew the name of all the reindeers? Well, I've always known the song. Always known the yeah. song? Yeah. Can you sing it? <laughs> yeah, I can. Go ahead. We're going to have to do that on our Patreon. <laughs> you have to pay if you want to see us singing. <laughs> ooh, ooh. No, we give it to you for free. <laughs> You started it off. Yeah, yeah he it. started off. I don't know it. I don't know the song. Uh, I, I'm a reader of the history. Okay, make sure you change. guys check in to our next podcast where we will feature Hamid singing the reindeer song. <laughs> I'll teach him the words. Okay, you teach me the word, then I sing it. Now, no no singing today? No, then? no, I'm, I, I'm feeling a little hoarse. Okay, so... Um, so we are in 19... <laughs> she, she's itching to sing that. You should no, sing it. No, I got to keep the viewers coming back okay. for more. Yeah. We can sing a little bit. Okay. Which one? We'll start off with the with the words. Ready? Three, two, one. You... <laughs> You know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Ready? Rudolph, bum, bum. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you right, ever now we can saw <laughs> okay. next. Okay. So <laughs> we are at the, the just before the, the civil war. We okay. in nineteen, you know, 
for nine, I'm sorry, 1840 to uh, 1860. So by that time, the department store was a thing, right? Especially in New York City and bigger cities in North. And they noticed that if they bring a Santa, they put the Santa in their front yard and let the children come and see the Santa, mm. sit on Santa's lap, mm. they add 30% to the revenue. 30% just having a Santa there. I believe it because have you, I'm guessing you've had you've had a we couple children. We still and do that. How hard is it to pull children away from something that they really really want, such Especially, as seeing Santa, these presents they're all and over. And then they do it at J.C. Penney, so then the kids have to walk through all the clothing, all the toys, and stuff. And I have to be there. You know, <laughs> you know how busy I am. We have to go there for one hour, go from all these uh, stairs and so on. For 15 seconds, my kids sit on Santa's lap. I know. To take a picture. I know. Did they cry? What? So many kids so, cry when they what? see Santa. So many Santa. parents are very, very the upset with up. the thought of having pictures of their kids on Santa's laps that 90% of them come out Crying. petrified, scary. They are scared to death of Santa Claus. Yes. And they post them and they love them and we all laugh and think yeah. it's cute. And it's the same idea. Yeah. It's the same idea. And then they notice Santa needed a helper. Mm. Mm. The elves. The elves. That was funny Because you couldn't manage all these children just by Santa. You have to have somebody there. Making the stuff. I say, I say and being at the North Pole making... All the toys. No, I'm managing, talking about the whole schedule. You know, kids are waiting to sit on Santa's lap. They have to have people to help Santa, their the helpers, lines. and they made it just put a little spin on it. Then they have the elves. Well, where, when did elves come into play in Christmas? Do you know? Around the same mid, uh, middle of the 18 mm -hmm. uh, in the, the books. I think it started. Yeah. I think the elves were in the original Chris, like yeah. Santa Christmas story. Yeah. yeah. And then it, it, it just a whole universe that started, which we all enjoy now. It's a beautiful tradition, and children enjoy that. That is the good time of the year for them. Mm -hmm. But let's be proud of it. We American made Christmas the way it is. It was all American invention. Wow, that's such a shocker that Americans made an invention surrounded by shopping <laughs> and spending <laughs> money. <laughs> and, 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 and lavish um, shows of how much money you spent this year. It's That's the one thing that kind of kind of blows my mind is we talk about Christmas or was originally about giving gifts. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about giving food, you know, to the poor and this and that. And now now we almost kind of see Christmas and the shopping as how many presents can we give? How many presents yeah. can we open? Can we show off what we're giving this year and what we got it's it's less about you know being around the family and the true meaning and feeding the starving children yeah. and things Which, like that but but let's go back to that we talk if you are talking about this christmas origin christmas origin is was made by our department store to <laughs> feed that frenzy of shopping and gift and so on and so forth but at the end of the day, we shouldn't forget about that. Even though we hate the commercialism <laughs> of the of the Christmas, which of you hates when you get a present? Mm. I don't hate when I receive gifts, but I do you just not. Hate to give it? But I do not. <laughs> no. I'm not trying to be a Grinch here, but I do not really appreciate when I receive gifts that I now have to, like a Christmas <laughs> mug. What am I now? I have a Christmas mug I have to store in my cabinet all year until one month, and I get to use it one month. You know what oh, I mean? See, like, I appreciate that's why gifts. I don't take my Christmas tree away. You know, people when I have my in my in my work uh, in my man cave or my work thing behind me is a Christmas tree all year long. I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you just have to keep the Christmas spirit going. Keep the spirit going. Yeah. All day long. Drink every, like in the middle of July, See, you know? See, I... Hobbit would have been perfect in the movie Elf, where they yeah, say, treat every day like it's Christmas. Yeah, yeah right, it's Christmas. right. <laughs> now, I mean, but, you know, the, let's not forget about that, that Christmas, more or less... The way it is now is made for children. It is. 
this is the time that the children, you know, you just have to look at f few children just around your, uh, you know, friends and so on to see that the spirit, uh, and that's a beautiful thing when you see the happiness in their eyes. Now, sure, uh, you can create that happiness with different methods, but gifts does work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they do. For children, gift always works. And it works for adults, too. So what are As you getting this Christmas, <laughs> Amanda? Um, I actually asked for, like, these special light bulbs that connect to my phone. Oh, <laughs> nice. I came up with a little something for Amanda's birthday. I'll have to let you in on it. We, we can't tell Amanda... Or, or, for no. Christmas, but we can't tell Amanda. Mm -hmm. because well, then we cannot talk we, about it. Yeah, we can't talk about it here, but stay tuned yeah. for, uh, the, for, the, for the Christmas present for Amanda. <laughs> yeah, we do try and celebrate Christmas here for our team. Mm -hmm. We put some stockings together. So it does help us. It does help kind of bring up the energy and make people happier. And we've been listening to Christmas music and singing along during work. Well, by the way, I think they should forbid that you can start Christmas music uh, in November, you know. I regret it be, that. Uh, it should be forbidden, you know. Come on. Christmas, <laughs> let's just say definitely nothing before December and maybe start the second week in December all the Christmas. So, but you understand that as well as the department store and the shopping thing. Longer the Christmas, longer the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The earlier you start advertising christmas the earlier people will start if it was shopping up to for christmas stores, and the christmas would start on first of january if it was up to them because oh, and go through the full year yeah it would just <laughs> never mean, end let's 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 talk about black friday a little bit do you think black friday is strategically put the day after thanksgiving after you're just so conveniently no no it's no, it's, it's the end of thanksgiving and the start of what people christmas would say shopping. christmas season yeah. mm -hmm. now um i mean we are a consumer uh we are a, a consumer society mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, you know there are lots of downsides of that but that is one of the reason though our economy is so strong so let us well see with all this commercialism and materialism, as well see that the reason we can be lived so well is because we are a capitalistic society. So um, we cannot go and complain uh, just and see just the negative side of that. Sure. This yep. huge commercial value that is produced around the Christmas time give a lot of people jobs. Is True. There There's a lot of seasonal jobs. Yeah. And... A lot of people in China have a job and a living because we celebrate Christmas in America. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> we, our Christmas, give Chinese a living, <laughs> our present to China. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the economies they work in mysterious ways, mm -hmm. but Christmas is a big part of it. So let's celebrate as well that our our economic strength that comes from totally. this consumer side of it now um so i'm an optimist in that regard okay so um i'm even though i am uh, i i'm the person i'm the santa i'm the person who always gives the presents i still am a sucker for christmas so what else do we want to talk about when you were in your training did you ever work in the er ever all the time <laughs> what do you did mean did you ever have christmas in the er every second christmas yeah Either Christmas or New Year, I was in the mm. ER. What was worse to do, Christmas or New Year in the ER? What was more busy? What do you think? I don't know. I would say New Year's. Yes. I'd say Christmas New is a family jolly. People get together. People want to family. Only people who are absolutely sick go to ER in, on Christmas. Whereas New Year's, everybody get drunk and bash their heads. And we have to fix them. Mm -hmm. New Year was one of the worst ER time to be on call. And Christmas was one of the best time to be on call because... People are being with safe with their family. People are safe with their family. I've heard, I've heard that Christmas is known for two 
two common injuries. One, which we were going to talk about, is falling off of a ladder. Let's not forget about the Christmas tradition of putting up Christmas lights all who over did, your house. Put, in the winter. Christmas, who put Christmas lights at the day of Christmas? You have to do it. Well, well no, this look is at, from November. Look at where December. we live. Yeah. It's freezing cold. Yeah, starting like, in October. If you ask my, my family, I know we put Christmas lights up before the first fall, first frost even. My dad does not take his Christmas lights down. He just leaves them up and then plugs them back in. Yeah. yeah. In the winter. Only in movies they put the Christmas uh, lighting and so on on the Christmas so day. So close, yeah. Everybody else does it like a few weeks But before. the point we're trying to make is from November to December, there's almost 15,000. But, but it's about Christmas. It's the so Christmas They're season. already taking care of no. me. You're okay, okay. Child. Hear me out on this one. <laughs> the other, the other uh, reason we see a lot of people in the ER is for fainting or passing out during Christmas morning. From their gifts? For, no, from the Christmas ceremonies. Oh, from During drinking. church. Nope. The, the funny old saying is the old Christmas ladies that pass out during church, during Christmas mass, because they have to kneel and stand up, sit down and stand up so many times, we get that vasovagal. Or to stand, or to stand yep. the and they'll pass out in the middle of Christmas Sweet morning Lord. church. Yep. Uh, that, I, is a, that is a, not a good Christmas uh, gift. No, no, but I've, I've heard that's in the, they should the top stop reasons for, they should stop doing that. for ER the visits during the holiday, holiday seasons. Yep. Just let them relax. Yep. Exactly. They've probably been baking all week. Uh, you know they have <laughs> cooking and, like we said, the stress of the holidays. You finally oh, yeah. get there and you get that sigh of relief. And You know, yeah. the beauty part, beautiful part of it is, I mean, uh, being uh, what I am doing, I just have to write the check, and somebody else deals with the all the stress of the gift and so on and so forth. Like, you know, that's that's so in that. Uh, but I can understand that for somebody who's trying to manage <laughs> the family, the children, and the dinner. You said you are stressed out because you have to make like for Christmas, you have to make dessert for the whole family, right? Well, my parents are divorced, so every Christmas I have like two to three houses I have to go, and that's really overwhelming because you have to. So bring... you have a father and a mother, or do you have to go to three? <laughs> my dad's wife's family. Oh, so you go to your dad's dad's family, your dad's wife's family, and your mother's family. Yeah. And I have to bring food for everybody at everyone. Everyone has some Christmas game, which I do love, but you, I have to like bring gifts for the games. It's just kind of overwhelming. Let's let's not beat around the bush. It it can be draining. It's it to is to be around family. Okay, the who's your Grinch? Okay, I'll the admit it. I am the Grinch of Christmas. That's the only one of Christmas is the Persian guy <laughs> who's born. A Muslim or whatever is the is the Christmas sucker and the Grinch is here. Oh, it's so stressful. We get gift. You I were like just that, saying but... all you have to do is write a check. Yeah. I have no one to write these checks. No one to. I don't have anyone to write the check for. I have to do the planning. That's right. The shopping. I don't even <laughs> like to drive. Amanda writes her own checks. Especially, especially in Minnesota, <laughs> driving is a. Is you have to drive thing? in a blizzard to buy a gift. That okay, oh. what does have to do with the history of Christmas? I, <laughs> I have a question, I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts. It, I mean, at least in the United States, it is a big deal to want a white Christmas. I hear people, my friends that live in warm climates, they're like, I want snow for Christmas, yeah. I want to see snow on Christmas. Some people buy snow they pay companies to come and make fake snow yeah. on their now there's actually christmas trees that underneath have an umbrella and the entire day it snows it on the christmas snow. tree yeah it blows up snow and the umbrella catches it why why is everyone so obsessed with the thought of having a white christmas they don't okay. live here okay <laughs> they, where, they don't where, live where, in minnesota okay. where is the christ born warm places in bethlehem are they snow there? Not not much. Not much. Not like Minnesota. There is, no, there very... is lots of snow. Where's lots the of north snow? North, north, north yeah, Europe. Europe. <laughs> Europe. Okay, so then that tells you where this most of this uh, tradition is originated. Not in Bethlehem. <laughs> right. I right. think everyone that wants a white Christmas needs to come up to 
Minnesota for Christmas and and see see yeah, if they welcome. want that. <laughs> you're you're welcome. You know they can get you a room in one of our concierge so you can enjoy the jolliness of the white Christmas. We have yeah. lots of Airbnbs for you yeah. guys. And you can even shovel snow to get the full, we, the full feeling. I, I shoveled my snow last night, and then today when I was leaving, I got stuck in my driveway. Do you have brothers? Why don't they come <laughs> and shovel for you? That's a good question. I hope they're watching. Uh, yeah, they, they better get be over to my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, no, no. Christmas uh, gifts. Yeah, no you. Christmas presents. <laughs> Now, um, it is at uh, 419. I think we covered the most of the um, uh, information about the history of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about as well um, about the, this uh, modern Christmas mm -hmm. and stress that comes with that. Is there anything else that, you know, you guys might want to know or want to say about the History of Christmas, is there anything else? I do want to say a piece of history. Mm -hmm. The first song played in outer space was Jingle Bells. Nice, that's mm -hmm. a good one. It, it was, yeah, the first song ever played in space, and they chose Jingle Bells. That, what does that tell you? <laughs> Americans love Christmas. That is <laughs> truly, that, that is truly probably mm -hmm. that the, the reason, you know? Well, uh, what else do we want to talk about? Or do you want to wrap it up? I think we can tell everyone to have a, a very safe, safe and thankful Christmas. And thankful Christmas. appreciate those around you. And I guess I want to say that all of us here at Essence of Pod and Essence of Life, we're thankful to have all of you guys here supporting us as well. We enjoy what we do. We enjoy reading your comments. We enjoy seeing your likes. Keep on sharing and keep on spreading the... The Christmas season. The yeah. yeah. And I, for myself, I really enjoy making learning history, science, medicine fun. And I think I have a fantastic team. And if the, the, they say Thanksgiving is the time to say what you are thankful for. But I think every uh, occasion every day is an occasion. And I'm thankful for my team. Watch the new TikTok they made. It is <laughs> a, a little borderline you know they they made me you know like a baby jesus which was not my idea well you know the difference between a neurosurgeon and god right well god know. knows he's not a neurosurgeon <laughs> no it was not my idea but i'm thankful for a team that helped me to realize my dream which is making learning fun and this is the bill nye of history Okay. Well, and, uh, for Do you know who Bill Nye is? I don't know who Bill, Bill Nye is. Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. <laughs> We've had a great year of podcasts, and we're looking forward to the next year. Yes, but I, I'm hoping that we have uh, one or two yeah, more Yeah, we should have a few more before the end of the year. Of the year. Well, but yeah, but it won't week. be about Christmas anymore. No, no thank you. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> Well, for IS Life and Essence, I'm Dr. Bossy. Amanda Armagas. Alyssa Haber. Well, thank you for joining us. Thanks. Be Thanks, safe. Thanks, guys. Bye.